Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the previous lecture, we talked about the development of occlusion, and we mentioned that the development of occlusion can be divided into four stages: اللي هي الجنباد stage, primary dentition, mixed dentition, and permanent dentition stage. We talk about uh, the gumbad stage and uh, primary dentition stage. Today we will talk about the mixed dentition stage. In mixed dentition stage, this starts with the eruption of the first permanent tooth till the shedding of the last deciduous tooth. There are significant changes occur in occlusion. You can see it in the mixed dentition period due to the loss of 20 primary teeth and eruption of their successor permanent teeth. And also, most malocclusion are developed at this stage. There is a specific or close relationship between the moment of eruption of the tooth and its stage of root development. This uh, relationship uh, includes that three quarter of the root, uh, when three quarter of the root uh, formed, the tooth normally erupts in the mouth. Uh, in the case of the lower first uh, permanent molar and the central incisor, half the root, uh, when half the root formed, uh, this tooth will be erupted in the mouth. Eruption sequence of permanent dentition. There is a specific sequence for the eruption of permanent dentition in the maxillary and mandibular arch. As you can see on this slide, that there is numbers on the teeth in the maxillary and mandibular arch. These numbers represent the eruption sequence of the permanent dentition. In the maxillary arch, the first permanent tooth to erupt is the first or maxillary first permanent molar which followed by eruption of the central incisor, then lateral incisor, and then followed by number four on the first uh, premolar, as you can see on the slide, that number four was sequence of eruption, not the number of the two, the sequence of eruption, uh, premolar, first premolar, which followed by the eruption of the second premolar, and then uh, eruption of canine while in the maxillary uh, in the mandibular arch the eruption sequence starts by also first permanent molar which followed by central incisor then lateral incisor but the difference between the maxillary and the mandibular arch is the eruption of the uh, premolars and canine as i mentioned that in the maxillary arch the premolars erupt before the canine while in the mandibular arch, the canine erupt before the premolars. So the sequence in the mandibular arch will be uh, first permanent molar followed by central, lateral, canine, first premolar, and second premolar. And after completion of uh, eruption of the first premolar uh, and the, uh, all the anterior and the premolar seed, the eruption of the second permanent molar will occur. And after a year, it will be followed by the eruption of third molar. This sequence of eruption of permanent teeth can play an important role when considering serial extraction procedure. As all you know that serial extraction procedure needed when there is a crowding in the, uh, in the teeth in general, and serial extraction will be needed uh, to provide enough space for the, to relieve the crowding. So you must know the correct eruption sequence of permanent dentition to do extraction. Also, any change in the sequence of eruption will be some signs of disturbance in normal development. In general, the, uh, there is any disturbance, if there is any disturbance in the uh, growth and development of a person, there, this may affect the correct eruption sequence of the permanent dentition. And these disturbances can be displayed as delay or acceleration in the eruption time of the permanent dentition. There is timetable for the eruption sequence of permanent dentition. As I mentioned that the first permanent tooth to erupt is the first permanent molar, which occur at age 6 years. 
was then followed by the eruption of the mandibular uh, central maxillary central then mandibular lateral and maxillary lateral incisors then after age of uh, 10 years the eruption of the mandib mandibular canine and maxillary premolars will occur so from age 8 to 10 there is no eruption of the teeth and this period will call the silent period. I will talk about it later, but it, uh, I will mention here that this period called silent because there is no teeth eruption at this period between age to 10 years. After 10 years, the eruption of premolars in the, in the maxillary arch canine in the mandibular arch will occur. At age 11, the uh, mandibular premolars and maxillary canine eruption will occur then followed by the eruption of the second molar at age uh, 11 to 12 years as i mentioned in the beginning of this lecture that there is a close relationship between the root completion and eruption or emergence of the tooth in the mouth this relationship that the, when three quarter of the root will form the tooth will erupt or emerge in the mouth except the uh, first permanent molar and central incisor uh, in these teeth half of the root uh, when half of the root formed the teeth will be erupt so the uh, one quarter or half of the root uh, formation will be completed after the eruption of the teeth in the mouth the mixed dentition stage can be divided into three phases the first transitional period occur between age uh, 6 to 8 years while the intertransitional period at about 8 to 10 years of age and the second transitional period at about 10 to 12 years of age. First transitional period. This period occur between age 6 to, to 8 years. So it associated with the eruption of first permanent molar and central and lateral incisors. Eruption of first permanent molar. It occurs at age six years. The eruption of upper and lower first molar different, uh, display different pathways for the eruption. The lower molar bud are mesially and lingually inclined. So er the eruption of the uh, lower molar will occur in mesial and lingual arc while the upper first molar bud will develop with buccal and distal orientation so eruption, the eruption of this tooth will occur in buccal and distal arc if these teeth are in the flush terminal plane uh, we uh, talked in the previous lecture, uh, lecture about the terminal plane we said that the terminal plane is a line drawing, drawn along the distal surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular second primary molar so if this line in a flush uh, terminal plane yani in straight terminal plane uh, this will result in cusp to cusp relationship between the maxillary and mandibular first permanent molar so to get the class 1 molar relationship some mesial movement of the mandibular first molar will be required and this is called early mesial shift early mesial shift what do you mean by the early mesial shift in the previous lecture when we talk about the primary dentition we mentioned that one of the characteristic features of the primary dentition is the presence of interdental spaces, which is either physiological or primate spaces. And we mentioned also that even these spaces is not a pretty, but it's very important for the eruption of the permanent dentition. Because the size of the permanent dentition is larger than the primary, so it needs more space. And one of the ways to get these spaces is the presence of primary interdental spaces. So in patient with a space, the primary dentition and the flush terminal plane relationship, the eruptive forces of the permanent molar will push the primary molar mesially. So it will close the space distal to the primary canine, the primate spaces, 
in the mandibular arch you can distal to the primary canine uh, while in the mandibular arch it will be mesial to the primary canine so thus allowing the uh, lower permanent molar to shift mesially into class one relationship in a, uh, but in a closed dentition this process is impossible the first transitional period also include the eruption of the permanent incisor which will replace the primary incisors permanent incisor develop lingual to the primary incisor as you can see in this picture the permanent incisor in red color will erupt more lingual to the primary incisor in the blue color and also the permanent incisors located in a zigzag fashion and the lateral usually trapped by the centrals and canine. The upper lateral incisor situated more palatal to the central incisor. Lithalic were influenced by mild occlusion more than the central. The unlocated palatal and lateral located palatal to the central. Lithalic were influenced by mild occlusion more than the central. Especially if there is no enough space in the dental arch for eruption of for all the uh, four incisors, most of the space or most of the available space will be occupied by the eruption of the central incisors. And when the lateral will erupt, they may erupt in a rotated or in a cross bite condition because there is no enough space for the eruption of lateral. Most of the space will be occupied by the central incisor. There is difference in the collective mesiodistal dimension of the permanent incisors and of the permanent and the primary incisor. The uh, permanent incisor in general larger than the primary incisors. And the difference in the collective mesiodistal uh, width between the primary and permanent incisors is about 6 mm in the mandible and 8 mm in the maxilla. The difference between uh, the amount of space needed for incisor and amount of available space is called incisor liability. لذلك قلنا إنه ال 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 permanent dentition هي larger than مثل ما ذكرنا إنه ال ال permanent dentition هي larger than the primary dentition, so it need more spaces. And the difference between the space needed for the eruption of the incisor where well, space available in the arch is called incisor liability. Due to the incisor liability, at age 8 to 6 years, some degree of crowding may occur. Uh, the, uh, if the, permanent, the primary dentition were an opened or space dentition, so a favorable clinical uh, liability will be exist. While in a closed dentition, unfavorable, incisor liability will be exist. The space discrepancy is compensated by three mechanisms. First, increased intercanine width. With the growth, the arch will be increased in size in all dimension. So, the, in, there is increase in intercanine width by about uh, 3 to 4 mm. Uh, this will provide uh, more space for the eruption of the anterior teeth. The second mechanism associated with the utilization of interdental spaces in the primary dentition, we mentioned that these uh, uh, interdental spaces of a primary dentition is very important for the eruption of the permanent dentition. The third mechanism associated with the eruption pattern of the permanent incisor, which tend to be more labially proclined, while the primary incisor tend to stand upright. So this will decrease the inter-incisor angle in the permanent dentition and placing them in a wider arch. Uh, and this mechanism will provide about 2 to 3 mm space to the uh, arch. After eruption or complete eruption of maxillary central incisors and before eruption of canine, some spaces you can see between the maxillary incisors. This space occurs uh, because the lateral incisor may be tipped laterally due to pressure by the crown of unerupted canine. 
It is also called ugly duckling stage because dentition in children at this stage look very ugly due to multiple spacing between their teeth. It also, uh, or this type of monoclusion also transient and self-corrected, which is also called physiological median diastema or broadband fever. Etiology of ugly duckling stage. The bilateral incisor will act as a guide for the eruption of the permanent canine. And during the path of eruption of permanent uh, canine, it will impinge on the, lateral, uh, on the root of the lateral incisor, causing the lateral flaring of the lateral incisor. The central will clinically respond to this pressure by central diastema and distal crown flaring. Uh, after uh, or uh, during the uh, eruption path of the canine in downward and forward direction, the, canine, the crown of the canine will come into contact with the crown of the lateral incisor and push it mesially uh, toward the central incisor to, uh, uh, to close the uh, diastema again uh, and this diastema uh, will be uh, self-corrected. The intertransitional period, and the second period in the uh, or second stage in the mixed dentition, begin when all permanent incisor and permanent first molar are fully erupted, and end when the replacement of the primary teeth start in the buccal region. This period is a silent period, extended from eight point five to ten years of age, during which there is no teeth eruption or exfoliation. For this reason, it, it is called a silent period. Except it will change in occlusion. It is also called lull period. As you can see on this slide, that the uh, during this stage, full uh, uh, eruption of the anterior incisors and first permanent molar. The final stage of mixed dentition is the second transitional period. This, is, this period is active uh, stage of development which involves replacement of a primary molars and canine and also include emergence or eruption of the second permanent molar. This change is normally taking place between uh, 10 to 12 years of age. We mentioned uh, that in the uh, first transitional period uh, there was replacement for the uh, primary incisors uh, and uh, we talked about the uh, collective mesiodistal width of the permanent incisor which was larger than the uh, collective mesiodistal width of the primary incisor and uh, these differences in the uh, primary and the mesiodistal width of the permanent and the primary incisors and the difference in the space available and the space required is called incisor liability. Here, uh, the condition uh, in contrast that uh, to the incisor dentition because the combined mesiodistal width of the deciduous uh, canine and molar teeth is greater than that of the permanent canine and the premolars. So there is excess space and this excess space is known as the leeway space. The amount of the uh, excess space in the maxillary arch is about 0.9 mm on one side and uh, equal to 1.8 mm on the whole maxillary arch, while in the mandible it will uh, be about 1.7 mm on each side, which is equal to 3.4 mm on the whole mandibular arch. This is the leeway space. Here you can see that the, the mesiodistal width of the lower E is larger than the upper E. And this is important features because after exfoliation of the uh, primary canine and uh, primary molars, the first permanent molar, as you can see on the red arrow, try to move in a forward direction to close the extra space. And the movement of six after exfoliation of the deciduous dentition is named late mesial shift. Eruption of permanent canine and the premolars. 
Uh, at the beginning of our lecture, we talk about the eruption sequence of uh, permanent uh, uh, teeth, and we mentioned that the difference between the maxillary uh, and mandibular teeth is the eruption of canine and premolars. In the maxillary arch, the premolars erupt be, uh, before the canine, while in the mandibular arch, the canine erupts before the premolars. Uh, so, in the, the uh, region anterior to the uh, permanent molar, the last tooth to erupt in the maxillary arch is the canine, while in the mandibular arch is the uh, second premolar. So, these teeth uh, consider the most vulnerable for potential crowding. For the canine to develop normally, it should first be directed mesially until it touch the apical part of the lateral incisor root and then it direct in coronal and lateral direction till reach the occlusal level. So, uh, if there is larger UA space present uh, within each quadrant, uh, so th there is more uh, potential that the eruption of the permanent uh, canine and uh, uh, premolars will occur, uh, will, uh, will occur in uh, a correct position. The malposition of canine occur, be uh, occur because the canine is the last tooth to erect in the maxillary uh, arch in area anterior to the maxillary first permanent molar. And if its path of eruption was buccally, it will erupt in buccal direction, or if it directed parietally, so it will be impacted. This is usually occur in maxilla, where the permanent canine develop in high position uh, near to the orbit, and also due to the long tortoise path of eruption. It depends on the uh, presence and absence of the uh, lateral incisor because, as we mentioned, that the lateral incisor consider or the root of the lateral incisor consider as a guide for eruption of the canine. So the presence or absence of the root of la uh, lateral incisor will affect the eruption uh, path for the canine. Eruption of the second permanent molar. With the eruption of this uh, tooth, the uh, final part of the second the transitional period will occur, and this at around 12 years of age. Uh, the eruption of these teeth is often associated with some reduction in arch length, which manifests as increased crowding. If the second permanent molar erupts before the premolars and due to the mesial pathway or mesial direction of eruption of this tool, this results in considerable arch length reduction and the crowding of the second premolar tooth. And sometimes there is lack of space in the posterior region of the maxillary or mandibular dental arch, and this will result in the impaction of the uh, second uh, permanent molar, and this occur in very rare cases. The vertical dimension of the face also increases with the eruption of these teeth, which allow the heightening of the alveolar ridge. And this provides space for maxillary and mandibular second molar, which is gained by bone remodeling in maxillary tuberosity and mandibular ramus. Thank you for your listening.